Welcome to Geologia da Terra, or Geology of the Earth. I am Fabiana Richter. Alright, so we have a lot to cover today, and all of these will be very important for when we talk about uh, sedimentary structures. So today we'll cover laminar and turbulent flow, Reynolds number, boundary layers and velocity profiles, fraud number and flow regimes. So we'll start by talking about fluid behavior. So fluids are substances that have their shape easily modified under the action of their own weight. They have two main properties, density and viscosity, which will directly affect the ability of a fluid to erode and transport sediments. The density of the fluid is defined as mass per unit volume of the fluid, referred to as Rho. Density affects the magnitude of the forces acting on a fluid and on the surface where the flow occurs. Density also affects the rate at which particles fall or settle through a fluid, where particles within denser fluids will have lower settling rates. For instance, because water is denser than air, water will be able to transport coarser sediments than air will. Now, density is different from viscosity, which is just a measure of the ability of fluids to flow, where fluids with lower viscosity flow readily and fluids with higher viscosity flow slowly. For example, air has low viscosity relative to ice, and water has low viscosity relative to honey. This is important for us because viscosity plays a key role in the turbulence of water, as we'll see next. There are two main types of flow, laminar and turbulent, and these types of flow occur depending on the velocity of the flow, the viscosity of the fluid, and the roughness of the layer above which it flows. Experiments with dyes injected into a flowing fluid show how they occur. In a laminar flow, all molecules in the fluid flow parallel to each other in the direction of transport. A laminar flow can be visualized as a series of parallel streamlines that never intersect each other. It occurs when the flow velocity is low and the bed over which it moves is smoother. Now when the flow velocity increases or the viscosity of the fluid decreases, the dye stream breaks down and becomes highly distorted. This generates fluid transport that is perpendicular to the main flow direction. This characterizes a turbulent flow, where the streamlines move in a complex way. Extremely turbulent masses of water form what we call eddies. Thus, turbulence is an irregular or random component of a flow. For example, if we have a heterogeneous flow that is composed of several dyes of different colors, these components would not mix if the flow is laminar. But if, the, if it is a turbulent flow, they will mix because the current lines intersect each other all the time. Now, if we want to determine if a flow is turbulent or laminar, we use the Reynolds number. This number is a parameter developed by Osborne Reynolds in the late 19th century. It is a number that represents a quantity without dimensions relating three factors. The flow velocity, the kinetic viscosity of the fluid, which is the ratio of fluid viscosity to fluid density, and a characteristic length, L, which may be the diameter of a barrel or the depth of a flow in an open channel. Now, the flow is considered laminar when the Reynolds number is low, lower than 500, and turbulent when it's high, higher than 2000. Between these numbers, we have a transition area. So, for example, when the velocity of a flow increases, we tend to go from a laminar flow to a turbulent flow with a larger Reynolds number. When we increase the viscosity of the fluid, as for example in cases of debris flow or lava flow, we tend to have a laminar flow with a smaller Reynolds number. On the other hand, let's consider air. We know that air is a fluid with very low viscosity, so it will always carry particles in a turbulent way. Now, water, water flow is laminar only when the flow has very low velocity or when water is flowing in shallow depths. These turbulent flows more commonly participate in sediment transport and deposition processes than laminar flows. In fact, turbulent flows of water and air are the most capable of carrying sediments because the turbulence increases the efficiency of the masses of fluid in eroding and in training particles from the bed above which the flow is occurring. 
When a fluid flows above a solid bed called a boundary, the frictional resistance of this bed will retard fluid flow. This lag zone is called the boundary layer, where the velocity of the flow will vary from the velocity of the boundary, or bed, which is generally zero, to the velocity of the part of the stream which is not affected by friction with the bed, called the free stream. Now, within the boundary layer, there is a sublayer called viscous sublayer, located immediately on top of the bed surface. This is a region of decreased turbulence that tends toward a laminar flow. Processes occurring within the viscous sublayer and the effects of rough and smooth surfaces are fundamental to the formation of different bed forms. The thickness of the viscous sublayer decreases with increasing flow velocity, but is independent of flow depth. We say that a bed surface is hydraulically smooth if the viscous sublayer is thick at low flow velocities or if the particles in the stream bed are so fine that they all fit within the viscous sublayer. Now we say that a bed is hydraulically rough if the viscous sublayer is thin at high flow velocities or if the particles are so coarse that they project up through this layer. Now because all of that, the rate at which water flows will be different at different locations of the channel according to the proximity of these locations to the bed surface. This allows us to plot velocity profiles of the flow in a channel, which will be smaller the coarser the flow is to the bed and these profiles will be different in laminar and turbulent flows. In a laminar flow, the variation of velocities in a profile will be much greater than the variation of velocity in a turbulent flow. The last important parameter that is important for us to know with respect to how fluids transport the sediments is the flow number. This number is a dimensionless quantity representing the ratio of the mean velocity of flow to the velocity of the waves in shallow water flow. The flow number can be interpreted as the ratio of the inertial forces to the gravity forces in the flow. In simple terms, it is a parameter that quantifies how gravity influences the way in which a flowing fluid transmits surface waves, which is an indicator of whether the flow will be tranquil or subcritical with flow number lower than 1, or if it's going to be shooting or supercritical with flow number higher than 1. In a tranquil flow, the speed of the waves will be greater than the velocity of the stream. The way to visualize this is to think of a very tranquil stream of water, like the one in the left. If you throw a little pebble into this tranquil stream, the waves created by the impact will probably be able to propagate against the current, upstream. In this case, the stream will have a flow number lower than 1. Now, if you throw that same pebble into a shooting flow of water, like the one in the right, with a flow number greater than 1, the waves will not be able to travel upstream because the velocity of the stream becomes greater than the speed at which the waves move. For instance, a transition from lower to higher flow numbers may occur when a tranquil flow moving over a relatively flat surface turns into a shooting flow moving over a steep slope. Now the flow number is important for us because it is an indicator of the flow regimes in which bedding occurs. This is because a flow number of around 1 marks the transition between the lower flow regime and the upper flow regime. And in a lower flow regime with a flow number lower than 1, we have the conditions that generate ripples and dunes. Whereas in a higher flow regime with a flow number higher than 1, we have the conditions that generate flat padding, anti-dunes and shoots and pulls. And that's it for today. Today we've discussed the behavior of flows and fluids and this will be important for us for when we get into sedimentary structures. Thanks for watching. Please leave your comments and like. And if you enjoyed watching this video, like and subscribe.